The Memphis Symphony Orchestra is the largest performing arts institution in the Memphis area and recently opened its new season back on stage after the COVID shutdown. In tonight's five star story, Kim Clark attends rehearsal at the Cannon Center for a master class in community. <laughs> Symphony Orchestra is part of Memphis deep musical history starting in the early 1950s as the Memphis Sinfonietta with 21 musicians. And this is our 71st season. Now MSO has 70 full-time musicians who according to President and CEO Peter Abel come from all over the world. It's one of the great contributions that the Memphis Symphony makes to Memphis is to bring these world-class musicians to Memphis to become Memphian. I've been conducting now professionally for 30 plus years, since the early 90s, um, and I've been really all over the country. As MSO's fifth music director, Robert Moody has led the group since 2016 and says symphony members whose average MSO stint is 25 years are so much more than master musicians. They teach here, they're very involved with schools, churches, synagogues, they're very involved in the jazz scene, in the blues scene, in the recording scene. <laughs> Take Michael Scott, a native Memphian, second bassoonist for Memphis Symphony Orchestra, a local contractor for Broadway shows at the Orpheum, and a retired instructor at Southwest Tennessee Community College. So after retiring there, I, uh, I'm, I'm the education coordinator for the Memphis Jazz Workshop, uh, which is a nonprofit in town. We teach, we teach students from middle school to high school how to play uh, jazz, how to improvise. I had no idea I would be a professional musician or even think about playing in the symphony orchestra after hearing this orchestra in the sixth grade. Uh, and that it had that kind of uh, impact on, on, on my life. Barry Cooper is a concert master and violinist. This is her 23rd season with MSO. She also fosters animals in need while teaching students violin, knowing firsthand how music can change a child's life. And that's the whole point of teaching. It's not to make, you know, world-class soloist violinists. It's to make good people, <laughs> proud people. <laughs> The other half of the life of the Memphis Symphony is investing in the musicians of tomorrow, investing in youth, especially in our, in our school systems. Uh, the Memphis Symphony was instrumental in bringing the ORF music programs to Memphis a long time ago, and we still work really closely with ORF teachers in Memphis. MSO's Tunes Details Literacy Program pairs music with children's books for performances in libraries and schools. We do over 100 performances of that a year. It's all part of making the orchestra accessible to anyone. And one of the reasons MSO makes us proud to call this place home. The different concerts that we play, we don't just play classical music. We get to dabble in opera and we get to dabble in some pops and some gospel, some country music even. You know, it's just all different styles. So there's really not a chance to get bored. Because I think the 21st century orchestra is very different than what people might be thinking the 20th or 19th century orchestra was about. This is really a place for everyone to come. People ask me this question a lot, do I have to wear a tux? No. Come in t-shirt and jeans. It really, you don't have to wear any specific thing. You don't have to be worried about when to clap. If you feel it, clap, please. I'm going to encourage you. I'm not going to look at you rudely. The ops, I'm going to be like, yeah, do it. But ultimately, we want to entertain you. We want you to uh, hear something beautiful and that becomes part of your life. And if that's the one time we see you, we're gonna try to make it the best one time, but we want you to know you can come back anytime. At the Cannon Center in downtown Memphis, Kim Clark, Action News 5. Oh, I loved hearing the Memphis Symphony Orchestra for the first time. Now, if you want more details about them, click on the link with this story at actionnews5.com.